So in the last video, we asked ourselves a question. What happens when you want to convert from one system to another system? What happens when you want to convert from one unit to another unit? What happens when you want to do unit conversion? Irrelevant of what the units are. May they be days to seconds, kilometers to miles, feet to meters, Celsius to Fahrenheit, ounces to grams, calories to joules, gallons to liters, pints to quarts, pounds per square inch to kilopascals. May it be the amount of time you worked, how much you get paid. May it be the time you spent on a project or a percent of the project you get done. May it be US dollars to euros to Canadian dollars to Australian dollars, pesos, pounds. May the relationships be set in stone, may they be absolute, or may they be functions that vary depending on certain criteria. Irrelevant of what the two systems are, irrelevant of what the connection is, irrelevant of what the functions are, how do you go about communicating from one system to another system when you're given a ratio, right? Now what we're gonna do, we're not gonna hit up all those, you know, just to learn this method. We're not gonna talk about a specific system, right? Because again, there's so many that we just listed, just a small fraction of how many units there could be, right? How many systems exist? So what we're gonna do is talk about the system that we set up, which is the world of color squares and triangles. And the connection we built between these two systems, between these two worlds, to be able to convert from one unit to another unit was that two blue squares were gonna be equal to three blue triangles. So what we set up was that two blue squares were gonna be equal to three blue triangles. And the two dots there are basically an equal sign, right? That's, that's what it means. That's the connection that we build from one system to another system. So how do we deal with this? There's two ways we can deal with this, okay? You can take this ratio like this and do a 90 degree turn on it this way, or you can take this ratio here and do a 90 degree turn on it this way and create different fractions, right? Because the two double dots there, the equal sign when you're given a ratio is basically the division sign, the fraction sign. That's your ratio. Which one of these are you going to use? It really depends on how you lay out your problem and what the final units are you're trying to get to, okay? Now there are two ways you can use these fractions in your calculations to do your unit conversion, okay? The question you have to ask yourself is, is what I'm trying to do require only one step? Is what I'm trying to do easy? Is it going to require only one conversion, one jump? Or is what I'm trying to do, what you're trying to do, the units you're trying to convert to, require multiple steps, okay? Is it, is it, is it more complicated? Are you gonna to have to do multiple conversions to get to the final answer? Now, if what you're trying to do is easy, you're going to use cross multiplication. And if what you're trying to do is hard, require multiple jumps, what you're gonna do is multiply a whole bunch of fractions together. So there's two ways that you're gonna go about doing your unit conversions. One of them is using cross multiplication. If what you're trying to do is easy, require only one jump, or you're going to multiply a whole bunch of fractions together if what you're trying to do requires multiple jumps, right? Multiple conversions before you get to your final answer, okay? Now, for cross multiplication, we already covered this in series 3A, right? There's a short little video teaching you how to do cross multiplication. It's super powerful, so learn it, right? You end up using it a lot. And we already talked about how to multiply a whole bunch of fractions together in series one, right? It was, um, you know, four or five videos put together on how to multiply fractions, how to add fractions, how to break things down into prime factors, right? And the basic gist of this is, what you have to know about this is, is that anything from the top can cancel out anything from the bottom as long as there's no plus or minuses between them. Now, just because there's four or five videos there, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna create a new video and I'm gonna call it the most important thing you have to know about multiplying fractions, okay? And I'm gonna put that up. So if you wanna do a little summary, little review of you know, what's important to know here, right? What the, what the tool is, and it's super, super powerful, right? You have to know how to multiply fractions together because it makes your life a lot simpler, right? It allows you to deal with rational numbers, okay? So I'm gonna make another video just summarizing everything, a little quick video just to give you a reminder, a recap of how you go about multiplying fractions and what you have to know about this, okay? So these are the two methods that we're going to use to do our unit conversions. And we're gonna start off easy, right? We're gonna go with the simplest one first. So we're gonna tackle cross multiplication first, right? We're gonna learn how to do unit conversions through cross multiplication. And then we'll hit up, you know, this one where we have to multiply a whole bunch of fractions together. And 
as we said before, the connection that we build between these two worlds is, is that two blue squares was going to be equal to three blue triangles.